how to create a gradient brush very quickly in Affinity Photo. Now in this one, it's using a rectangle, but you can use all kinds of designs to create your amazing gradients for your gradient brush. So let's just go to this document. And this document, you notice you've got some shapes. All they are simply rectangles. Rectangles with a gradient fill and a stroke. So if I go over here, got this design, hold down the alter option key and drag. And that's all I did. Just create multiple copies of it. And then just go up here and you can modify the fill. Go to swatches, just select a different swatch, something like that, something like that. And you can see as you do that, you can create different designs. And of course, what you can do, you can manipulate it with the gradient tool. So just drag down there. Also around the edge, I've got these dots. And the reason for that creates a sort of like ribbon or ridge design. So again, go to the rectangle or any of the other shape tools. And you can see up here, the stroke, I've got a gradient for that as well. And you can change that. So you can just select different ones, create different colors in that design but also click here and you'll notice here, I've got this. I can modify the dash style and this is the dash style. So with dash style, you get these dots. If you set it to zero, you will get dots. If you of course increase that, you will end up with lines instead, but I just want dots, so zero. And then of course you could create 10 or 15 of these rectangles. Now I'm just gonna export them. All you need to do is simply just go here and say select this first one and then go to file and export. And then I'm just gonna run through and export all of them. But the key thing is selection area. Make certain your area is selection area and then export. So export, and I'm just gonna call it 112. I've already used one, so save. And it's saved as a PNG file. Once you've exported them, you can then use them as a brush stroke. Let's just go over here to another document. And in this document, I'm just gonna create a very basic brush. You don't have to use anything, obviously special, just a quick rectangle, then go to layer and rasterize. That's it. Then go to brushes, and then you can save it. So just go right side menu and new brush with selection. That's the key thing, new brush from selection. If you can't find the brushes panel, it's in the window menu. So new brush from selection, and like I say, it could be anything because I'm going to remove it. I'm not going to keep it for very long. So double click, and it goes into the brush editor. And you've got all the settings here, general dynamics, and also texture. And you'll notice you've got the brush there. Over the other side, you can add. So you can add those brushes you've just created. So I can't remove it at the moment, so I'm just going to go to add, and then we're going to add these files. So I've got five of them. Just quickly add those. So once you've added them all, what you can then do is go to the first one and you can remove it. So it's gone, that's it. So now all you've got these gradient designs and they've all got those dots around the, the stroke and you've got the gradient, they're all different. And at the moment you'll notice the option is random. So if you go for pressure, you get this effect. If you go for angle, you get a different effect and so on. But you can also use cyclic and you get a lovely flow between them. Doesn't look much at the moment because of the spacing, but I'm just gonna change that. But you can see now you've got all these, you've got cyclic and you've got this on. Just go into general and you can change the spacing. And as you do that, crunch it to 1% and you can see what happens. Now you've got this lovely flow between all of those gradients. Also, you can go back to texture and you've got this option here next door to cyclic. Just click here at the profiles and you can click on the profile. And as you do that, you'll get more or less. You can change it. So you can see and create, you've got obviously that gradient there coming through. Click there, just drag that down. You can see you've got another gradient coming through and so on. So you can create literally thousands of different designs by just using these profiles here and just tweaking them slightly, maybe adding additional points in your profile. I'm gonna go with that one. So just there. Then go to general and you can modify the size so you can reduce it down. I've got spacing at 1%, but also you can go to dynamics and you've got size jitter. So if you want, you can create brushes that are like that. And also you'll notice now, you can actually see it more clearly maybe because it's bigger. You can see the ridges. That's for the dots. The dots create this lovely ridge effect, like a ribbon effect, I suppose. And also go here, 
you jitter. I've set that now to random. You can see it's adding some jitter, but randomly. I don't want that. What I want is to go for this one, cyclic. So cyclic, you've got this effect, and you can modify this again, so you can tweak it even more. The changing of colors all can be modified like that to create some truly interesting effect, just by changing this single profile, and then close. So now I've got my brush. Let's just remove this one. Don't need this layer anymore. I can now just quickly add the ribbon. So let's go to the paintbrush tool, select that or press B. That's another option, makes it a lot quicker. And then you can ply your brush. Now, at the moment I've got symmetry. Let's just turn that off. Don't want that at this precise moment. So now apply it like that. And you can see then you've got this effect. And you can see as you apply the ribbon, you've got pressure added to the size, so it just changes. You don't, don't always have to have that, of course. Double click. You can tweak that. So again, just reduce that size down, size jitter, or just set it to none. And it's a solid same size as it goes around. So you can create a lovely design like this very rapidly. And again, these gradients can be changed, altered, and added to and removed at any point. So you don't have to go with ones you've just got. You could simply just select them and then remove and then add additional designs, which of course could be filled with something else, not just that could be filled with pattern designs. So you could fill it maybe with some like circular designs or polka dot designs or whatever, a whole range of different, you know, it's nice to have the same sort of design each time, but it doesn't have to be a gradient. Gradient's great, it's super colorful, but it's, you could fill it like with like different colored stars. So you could have a sort of brush that's a star brush where it's filled with green ones for one shape, blue for another and so on. And then that would flow between the two to create some truly unusual options there. And you can see now, go here to symmetry. So this is symmetry, makes sure it's locked. It's always a really good idea to lock it. And then you can just simply apply that and create a lovely ribbon design across there. And of course you can always apply effects as well. Once you've got your design like that, you can go to filters, go to distort, and maybe go down here to mirror, and you just apply a mirror effect very quickly, click apply there. But any design can be used, it doesn't have to be this. You can, like I say, fill it with loads of different things, loads of different grains. But the key thing also for creating some interesting effects is the stroke. So you might decide, you know what, let's just go and change the stroke size. So maybe go for this size, click this one, and then click there. Maybe go for a different size. You don't have to have them uniform. So that would click there. Again, takes a few seconds to come up. Maybe have it 12. And of course you can vary this as well. So maybe go for slightly thicker designs and you can create some very unusual designs that approach. So I'm just gonna do that again. Maybe add some variation there. Maybe change the gradients and maybe just keep the first one there as well. Also what you can do is apply effects to it. So with this selected, or all of them, you can actually select all of them if you want. Just go here to effects, so just click there, and then go to outer shadow. Just go to radius, offset, and intensity, so they all end up with this shadow. Also, maybe go with 3D effect. So you've got this, extend that, click close. All these designs, again, can simply be selected like that. Go to file and export. You can see the design there, export, and just select a different, obviously, thing. This time, maybe 20.png. Also, you can use this brush. So right click, and then go down here to duplicate brush. I want to keep it. So I've got that brush, and now I've got this one. And I can double click, and you can see, obviously, you've got the design there. Everything's all set as before. But what you can also do is go to texture, and then simply select this and remove. Select that one, and again, even by doing that, just removing one of them, you can see you get a completely different design. Again, remove, and then remove that one. And then, of course, you can't remove this one, so you need to add the other one. So I'm just gonna go for 20.png. Well, now I've added them, you can see what happens. Because of the shadow, they're actually slightly darker. So you might not want to add a shadow. Perhaps not the best decision. But what you can do, you can now select this one, and then you can remove it. And with that again, you've got cyclic there. You can always then just click here 
and you can just tweak this. Again, it will change the end result for your gradient design. Also, what you can do is you can obviously modify some of these other settings. Again, I've still got 1% there. Dynamics don't have to have the 100% there or we'll change the cyclic. Again, you can just tweak this to create a different design there and close. Now, let's just apply it. Just go, and go press B for the paintbrush tool. Turn the symmetry off. Don't want that anymore. And apply now because you've got that 3D. You've got this lovely 3D gradient effect. So it's a bit darker because of the shadow. Perhaps that wasn't a necessary option. But that's one of the things when you're doing sort of discovering about things, you think, you know what? That's not such a great option. But also what you can do, of course, is with any brush, you can always apply blend modes. So you might decide, you know what? I don't want that. I, I want lighten. Don't have to have normal. I can always go for lighten. And then you can combine it. So you can see then you get this lovely sort of, I don't know, weird sort of shadowy sort of ghostly gradient applied on top. Or of course, it doesn't have to be a gradient design. It could be any image. And you can see you can create something like that very rapidly. Or maybe with that design, you can always resize it, maybe duplicate the design, maybe use it with filters, go to distort, mirror, and so on. Create some truly weird and wonderful designs very rapidly from using that, just that standard brush, but instead of using normal, just using a different blend mode. So again, go here, use lighten, or maybe go down here and use negation. That's another great one, which you can then add on top there to create some truly surreal looking unusual brushes. Obviously when you're not over anything, it goes back to what it normally is. But as soon as you do on top of something, you can create some truly weird gradient effects using that, something like that. And as before, you can use symmetry. So just click that on. Again, I'm gonna go with four. I always find four is a quite a nice one to demonstrate. And you can then just apply that. And you can see then you get this lovely, beautiful gradient design. And of course, what you can do, double click there. You can go here for size data. So you can just change that, go with pressure. So you might like decide to create slightly, maybe smaller at the center and then go get bigger or maybe go the other way, really big, small, and so on. A variety of different designs can be created like that. And if you want to change the colors even more, simply just go over here and maybe use some of these personas like tone mapping and just go in here and just tweak it and modify it using that to create some interesting colorful designs, maybe a black and white design even. Or something like that. Very garish design, I agree. And click apply. If you've got any questions about this technique, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.